Hello guys, welcome to today's class where we'll be looking at the very first property when, when we talk about binary operations, which is the closure property. Now, the closure property explains that what, when you have a particular element of a, of a particular set, and you have another element of that set, now we'll be using this idea from, from set theory, so when you have a particular element of a set, which we know is a member of a set, and we have another member, which is also another element of that same set. Now, when we now combine these two elements together through a particular operation, the idea of the closure property is that was whatever answer or value we get should also be a member of the original set. So what am I saying? In, in, in mathematical terms, it just means that was if I have a, a particular A and a particular B that are elements of a set R, I have a particular A and a particular B, which are both elements of a set R. If I now want to have an operation between A and B, that is, I want to have an operation I can say A operation B, and I'm having an A operation B, that is, there's a part, I'm relating A and B with a particular formula, or a particular relation, or a particular mathematical statement. The idea of the closure property is to what? Is to, is to tell me that what, whatever my answer now becomes, after I've related both of them, should also be an element of that same set R. So that is what the closure property is explaining. You know, the closure property is just trying to ask that after doing your relation, after performing your operation between those two experiments, those two values, those two elements, will your answer still also be a member or be an element of the original set? If it won't, then we will say what? The, that operation is not closed under the set R. But if that particular answer is also an element of the set R, then I'll be, I'll be forced to say that what? The, the, the operation, the operation this is what is closed under the set R. So we'll be taking examples on how we can actually express this. The very first example we'll be taking here, we have a question here that says, for a set Q of rational numbers, determine if the operation asterisk is closed, where A asterisk B equals to A plus B, that is, and also A and B are elements of set R. Okay, in this case, this will be set Q. Now, they are giving us a set Q of rational numbers. That's why our knowledge of numbers and numeration is very important. We must be able to differentiate between rational numbers, integers, positive and negative, then um, natural numbers, real numbers, complex numbers. We should be able to separate the meanings of each of these values so as to, de so as to determine whether or not a particular operation is closed under that particular set. Now, if you look at this question, they said what? For a set Q, of rational numbers. Determine if the operation asterisk is closed, where A operation B is equal to A plus B. That means this operation is basically an addition operation. It is just an addition operation. That is, our asterisk in this case, our asterisk in this case is representing our addition sign. So it's only in this case that we're doing this. We're starting like this so as for us to understand the full concept of what we're talking about. So our asterisk case is just explaining that this operation is just basic, it's just a basic addition operation. Now, we are, we, are, we, are, we are asked, is this operation closed under the set Q? What are rational numbers first of all? We know rational numbers are numbers that, will, that do not have swords or, or non-terminating non decimals in them. So we know that what? A rational number is a positive integer. A positive integer is a rational number. A fraction that is terminating is also a, a, a rational number. A sword is not rational. So we know all we need to do is that we need to take any rational number that we know, any two rational numbers. We can just take any two rational numbers we know. We can say let A be equal to 5. We know as well 5 is a natural, is a rational number. I can say and then B. Let's say B is theory. If A is 5 and then B is theory as rational numbers, then let me say yeah, theory and 5 are elements of set Q. That is, the two of them are both rational numbers. Then I can say that recall from the operation we're given, we're given the operation a asterisk b, a operation b equals to a plus b. So if this is the operation we're working with, then it implies that since our two values that we're taking as a and b are theory, then I'll say then I can say theory operation 5 will be theory plus 5. And if that is the case, I can say that this will give me a value of 8. Now, I've gotten a particular answer, a particular value. Now, I am not done. What I need to now do is to determine if this value is also an element of the set Q. If 
8 is an element of the set Q, then I am right to say that was this operation asterisk is closed on that set Q. But if 8 is not a member, is not an element of set Q, then I'll be saying that was this operation asterisk is not closed on that set Q. But as we all know, 8 is also a rational number, so I can say that was therefore since since 8, since 8, which, which is the answer to this operation, is an is also an element to the set Q. Then the operation asterisk is closed under set Q of rational number. So this is all what we need to do. You just apply the operation based on the values you are given. If you are not given values and you are asked to test, you can as well just take two random values, which are also elements of the particular set you are given. And then once you have tested it, you determine whether it is actually closed or not closed. So we say, well, then the operation asterisk here is closed under set Q of rational number. Why? Because 8 that we got as our answer is also an element of the set Q of rational number. So this is where we call it a day. In the next class, we'll be looking at another example on how we actually work on questions relating as relating to the closure property and, and what have you. See you next class.